Hey everyone, I hope all of you guys are doing good and staying safe. You know, today we have a very special person with us. I'm uh, honored and as well as privileged to bring upon uh, Adil, uh, who is from Pakistan. And he is managing an AWS community over there. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome that he can do all this uh, for the community. He has been doing a lot. And it's pretty crazy. You know, sometimes I even have the uh, doubt as to how he spends his time on all the other aspects of uh, self-development as well as working for any organization and so on. So I don't know much about Adil myself. So I'm probably going to leave it to Adil to give a self-introduction about himself and talk about some of his work. And then we would slowly go into today's topic, which is CloudFormation and Terraform. So Adil, it's it's all over to you. Yeah. So hey, everyone. Uh, I think you just uh, you just introduced me. Like, uh, I'm an AWS community builder, DevOps engineer, working for an organization. So I think this is about, all about me. And also a GitHub uh, expert from Pakistan. Uh, I just more contribution toward my GitHub. Also recently, I just become a GitLab hero. <laughs> so uh, actually, uh, my actually I always become always want to be a DevOps engineer. When I was actually in my college days, I always want to be a DevOps engineer. I was just uh, my one of my cousin who was actually in DevOps. So. I was thinking that there are very less people in this DevOps community. So how can just, uh, you know, in Pakistan, mostly that we have very less community of DevOps. But right now we have a lot. Uh, now I give free trainings to students uh, and uh, also experts, like in different domains, like system administrator, site reliability engineers who want to be in DevOps. I provide them free trainings. And, uh, and DevOps is just like a passion for me. And communities help me to pursue my passion. So this is all about me and what I just do in my daily life. So yeah, Akshay. So our topic is all about cloud formation and Terraform. Yep, yep, yep. In yep. generally, uh, we will it... more discuss. Yeah, we will more discuss about the automation, like how which easiest way and which is more friendly for the people, for the developer who more support. Uh, our actually session will be more depend on it. Neither we will, uh, you know. Uh, we will just compare both these tools because all of them, because these tools are awesome. Like uh, if you have command on all on all these tools, like what cloud formation and Terraform, you are, I think you are an automation expert, but right now we will discuss like uh, what kind of languages they are supporting, uh, multi, uh, who just more support like multi cloud computing and uh, about the post, post is really important for the cloud. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's pretty nice, uh, you know. But before starting off with our uh, session for today, uh, Adil, so could you talk a little bit more about you know the curious aspect of you in terms of learning more new skills in the market, and how do you go about doing that? What's what's your thought process behind that? Because we usually talk a lot of technical terms, right? But we never get to know how a person grabs that knowledge. So, what's your uh, the secret in, in terms of uh, attaining the success that you have in this field right now? So actually, uh, I'm more believe on practical side, like hands on. Uh, I, I did not like go, uh, like how I, I did not like re reading book is really a good habit, but uh, implementation is also really uh, important. Like uh, nobody asks you, uh, like in DevOps, nobody asks you that uh, what is AWS about the AWS services. Yeah, it's generic, you know about them, but it's more important you know how to implement them about the VPCs and how about they're working. You know, you know, it's good that you know about VPC, but in the organization, everyone asked uh, about the implementation. So actually my more focus toward labs. Uh, I created labs for myself and I do it. Uh, and once I just I did it, I just wrote a blog on Medium and Dev2. Usually, uh, I love both tools. Like they just have some great SEO, and your blog just really came up with Google easily. So you don't need to be work hard like creating a WordPress website, hiring someone. <laughs> so actually, we don't have so much time here. So I just wrote some blogs and uh, share with my LinkedIn community. Hey, I just did. So if you, you know, if you want to learn about Terraform or it's working with Azure, how you can automate your Azure infrastructure using Terraform, here is it, there's a lab, just go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So, and for, especially for the students who can't afford, like uh, cloud is really not free 
usually so i just really help them how you can like there are some tricks like uh, for students email they provide some facilities like 100 dollar credit they don't know like they have just such a powerful tool in their hand the student email so i just really let them know that use this tool and also get a student developer pack they have just provide more than 100 services for free even professional use such services and they just provide students totally free of course so i'll just let yeah. them know yes you already have a free services why are you just pause your hands on hands on uh, and for my secret hands on is really important and hard working without hard working uh, i think <laughs> uh nobody nobody just gets succeed without hard work hard working there are some shortcuts but i don't believe on shortcuts i more believe on hard work got it got it that that's beautifully said you know like we could we could just put it in one sentence by saying that you know practical experience is something that is really really important in today's world because there is always a piece of paper that you can get at any point of time uh, but the experience that uh, you hold hold at this point of time is more in regards yeah. to how many labs that you do on a daily basis and how you break your head uh, through challenges and problem solving and so on yeah that, that's pretty synonymous and it's very well said adil uh, thanks a lot for that i think our audience should listen to you more should reach out to you more in regards to a free training as well as a lot more devops related content and so on so going yeah, into our topic uh, for today uh, yeah sure sure yeah, please sure. go ahead yeah go ahead yeah please. um more uh... Actually, uh, I, I believe more on LinkedIn platform, so they can reach me on any time if they just need help with GitHub, GitLab. But usually, I will not just do their assignments, of course. <laughs> but I will just help them out. <laughs> Even yeah. Stack Overflow doesn't allow you to do assignments, so you need to be do do it yourself. But if you are facing any problem, we are always here. DevOps community is always here for you. And of course, you are see more than senior than me, and uh, then. <laughs> With great power come with great responsibilities. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, we we all love people who are in the service oriented mindset, right? Because that always uh, gives you a level of satisfaction and a level of happiness in regards to seeing other people uh, grow right in front of your eyes, and you just being a pillar of support in the background. So that's a, a very beautiful statement, and I always stand behind it. So uh, in in terms of moving towards today's topic, you know, before we start off the nuances of what uh, cloud formation and terraform is all about you know adil i would like to know what is your interpretation of what infrastructure as code is all about so uh so when i, I just learn about what is infrastructure as code i i did not just statement that this is for the automation i just go in more depth i just learned some books uh, that there is a declarative language there is a there is a complete stack behind this like stack oriented why did there just to be called a stack oriented language is like declarative to be called a stack oriented so i just learned about the stack like how the stack is working so when i just uh, learn all of these things like more in just more in depth there's a lot of very cool books by orally and packet uh, and these kinds of organization they are more in depth uh, they can help you out to understand infrastructure as, as a code more in depth that there's a stack uh, and once i just learn about these in more in depth uh, stack cloud formation and terraform in easier for me because they just follow the declarative code and stack oriented uh, uh, model so declarative model actually so yeah this is uh, okay. uh, yeah this is infrastructure as a uh, code for me <laughs> okay, very nice you? very nice very nice so my interpretation of infra as code is all about you know we we have been creating infrastructure for ages right so we have always been creating infrastructure in on premise and recently with the adoption of cloud and all that we have been creating a lot of infrastructure on the cloud so to automate it all the way and to probably just create something called as immutable infrastructure right so when you start yeah. creating immutable infrastructure which is like cattle which can always be toned down and created back again you don't have to go through 20 different steps or 25 different steps what if you could do all that with just one command or probably a few commands right and what if you could test your code all these things became possible when we used had something like infrastructure as code and to put it in very simple words rather than going ahead and clicking on the console and typing on my keyboard and clicking with my mouse i would love to just execute one command which just shows the power of automation right and i believe that cloud formation terraform 
Google Deployment Manager, ARM templates on Azure, and Pulumi are all behind the same principle. But it's just that at the end of the day, the preference of the person also plays a part and the preference of the organization. So if the organization, for example, is working with multiple cloud-based platforms, that's why we have our expert over here, Adil, who is going to talk more in regards to Terraform, right? And what if, suppose, the organization has a five-year partnership with AWS in terms of reducing costs and so on? That's where I come into the play, where I talk a little more about cloud formation and how it is completely AWS native, but it's also go, go, growing big. It is also having more features that's going to allow it at one point of time to be more compatible with other cloud-based platforms also. Because, of course, AWS does not want to always constrain itself to just AWS. Right? So this is my thought process behind Infra's code. Uh, it's very beautiful. Uh, I love it at this point of time, the way that we are talking. Uh, at this point of time, there is only 25% to 30% of adoption of infrastructure as code. There are still a lot of companies who still haven't moved towards infra as code because of the learning curve behind it. Because when you think about it, a person has to understand the cloud basics or the infrastructure mm -hmm. basics and then yeah. learn a declarative language before going towards something like infra as code. So that's where my question to you, Adil, comes into play, wherein how does a person learn and understand something like Terraform? What, what are the best resources out there? So, uh, so, so the learning curves depend on a person. That uh, for me, uh, when people ask me, and I just said, you just really need the internet for the resources. Like we have Udemy, we have GitHub, and uh, we have a lot of resources. Like in, if you uh, want, don't want to spend the money on the resources, like we just have a Cloud Guru. We have uh, these are the premium resources, and they just provide a lot of a lot of the good content but if you don't have the money and you want to start learning uh terraform something but i really recommend people youtube uh, which is actually the really good resource to get started and i think free uh uh free code camp uh is really uh, really doing awesome job in when it's come to devops and uh, they just provide free resources for aws they provide resources for devops for infrastructure as code they have complete playlist like three or two, eight, or they just have videos. So I think these can be essential when it's come to learning. Uh, and it's really dependent on the person. Like uh, if you want to spend the money, then he can just go for the premium sources. But uh, it's really depend on the person that what he want to pursue. Amazing, amazing. And for cloud formation, I would always say that, you know, the documentation is pretty amazing. I mean, I have never seen something that's uh, very clear because I, uh, I can, yeah. Uh, relate to it and it's synonymous that until and unless you know each and every parameter of the template that mm -hmm. you're creating that actually doesn't uh, i mean you don't have the necessity to go to the cloud-based platform and start clicking through stuff and all that because you know the right parameters you know what is possible and what is not possible and i believe that cloud formation docs itself is one of the best resources out there but other than that any other person who would love to learn cloud formation uh, from scratch is practice you start writing your own templates just by referring the cloud formation docs they have an amazing github repository with some really nice examples under the aws labs uh, repository so that's i believe the best way to learn something like cloud formation uh, for you for terraform uh, what would be the direct resources that you would go for so when when i started learning i created i created myself a roadmap first i need to be learn the basics of cloud if I does not know about the cloud, about the cloud models, how can I supposed to be learning infrastructure as core? First, I need to be have a command on AWS or Azure. It's depend, it's, it's depend to you. Like if you want to be Azure engineer, AWS engineer, it's really depend on you. So first you need to be have a command on cloud models, like how's they're working. And uh, after this, you can go for, uh, uh, if you really want to learn about the infrastructure as well, just go for uh, their learning, like how automation work, declarative language, how declarative languages work, how their stack are working. Uh, there are actually a lot of good content, but uh, books are really recommended. Recommend, but if you want to be learn the concept in more depth, because books have a lot of in-depth uh, concept, but and videos are just you know uh, very on point. 
they just want to what is infrastructure as for yeah they just explore you it's just for the automation with the help of this you can automate your infrastructure so on but when it's come to books they just give you more in depth like as you just talk about in immutable they they are really yeah. in depth in books you talk about declarative languages declarative models about the stack oriented how stack oriented is working and uh, then infrastructure as for how they're working with kubernetes and so on so i really recommend go through with some books and then go for if you are now finally you are uh, infrastructure as code you know infrastructure for how it's working you can go for the cloud formation and terraform but now there is some language gap in terraform we follow hashi corporation language which is actually a very easy and readable uh, and in the terra cloud formation we follow json or yaml they are also very human readable so now uh, how we can just uh, uh, make ourselves what we need what we need to be go for like we go for terraform or for cloud how about how about you what will you oh, suggest yeah. oh I, i would i would probably suggest a person like you mentioned to understand a cloud based platform at least let's put it in perspective that they need to understand how a, a solution architect associate related of content of services work because that gives them at least knowledge of 20 25 services and then they can think about the automation behind creating all these resources onto a platform then of course learning something like yaml or json is really nice and even uh, learning something like python or go for probably going ahead and you know parsing those json as well as filtering out some necessary values and the functional programming aspects of understanding a for loop and if condition and so on and when they learn that together with the declarative aspects of it then when they move on to something like terraform which is hashi corp configuration language uh, where you know dynamic and for each blocks are the most powerful aspects so rather than repeating my resources doing something like that but for that i need to understand what a for loop is all about i need to understand how they have implemented uh, the uh, conditions in the background right so all these things for me to understand is that's where that gap is which we have discussed right now is to understand a functional programming along with something like a declarative language and then moving towards infra as code because when you think about it you know pulumi is something that's more synonymous with developers because you can write your infra as code with uh, java programming or dot net or probably using typescript and so on right so that is more synonymous with developers but we can't expect everyone in the industry to think as developers there are so many system administrators linux administrators yeah. network administrators who have a grip of probably python uh, but not something like core java or probably the dot net framework and so on for them cloud formation and terraform are the best uh, tools that they could probably go ahead and learn so since we have knocked it out that this is how you start your career in terms of infra as code and you learn it let's move on to some other uh, technical concepts in terms of terraform what do you think are uh, the two major aspects that someone should concentrate while they start their journey with terraform uh, so uh, for me uh, what is more important than cloud formation terraform manage multiple cloud is you can easily manage a terraform and multi cloud like you have a, some servers on google cloud microsoft and also on it. AWS. So you just write some configuration files. In the files, you just have some declarative like Hashi Corporation. In the file, you just said like I just need some uh, two servers, three servers, two servers on AWS, three servers on Azure, and some five servers on Google Cloud. And you want to change any type, you can easily done with the help of that. So how about cloud formation? Can we do this with cloud formation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that's a very tricky question you know yeah, there are some <laughs> things that people wouldn't have explored right so since i have explored it i can tell you that it is possible with cloud formation to create something like a gcs a bucket right google cloud storage buckets but then we will have to go ahead and use something from the cloud formation registry something which is like tf double colon double colon gcs colon colon bucket right so we are going to use something like a third party provider kind of uh, which is registered in the cloud formation registry provided necessary credentials for it to talk to google cloud to your respect to account to that respect to project in order to create it through cloud formation so it's a work around it's a little tricky but it's possible so you will still be Can able to do create it? resources yeah 
can we do it using lambda <laughs> we can do it using lambda but it's not that everyone <laughs> uh, will start writing code in python or node js you know it's uh, not everyone so is a functional that, programmer it's so. mean that it's really tricky we can but it's really tricky uh, yeah, but yeah. there's a way it, it's possible but it's possible yeah it's possible Cool. So uh, when we move on to Terraform, you know, it, there is one more aspect. Like, what do you think about uh, the providers and the provisioners that Terraform gives you? Uh, do you think it's more than sufficient, or do you think there are a lot more providers that could come up in the next few uh, years? I think uh, uh, today I just have researched on Terraform Marketplace. They are just come up with uh, new additions, and I think the actually Terraform is really open source and it's open source on github there's a lot of people who just contribute to it so uh, i can say that uh, there's a lot of come to their provisioning and to their plugins yeah i'm uh, actually confident on it <laughs> okay very nice very because nice. of the because of this open source because you know yeah. the, when things are really open source they usually grab uh, individually like we have open source other tools that are, are open source which i use in my daily life and uh, terraform is one of them and uh, really just uh, come up with uh, really with great uh, updations like they create up with new features and uh, i love it about this terraform so how uh, cloud formation is i think is not open source it's a closed source by aws uh, it's, so it's they, completely with aws yeah it's, it's completely yeah. with aws so yeah, yeah. So pretty much I will have to create all these resources that you're talking about through Lambda functions, right? Because Lambda functions allow us that flexibility of talking to other APIs and so on, which are yes. outside of the AWS ecosystem. So that's the only way that I can think of in terms of creating something like some resource in Datadog, you know, or some resource in New Relic, which probably uh, Terraform already has a provider for. So that's where the flexibility of Terraform comes into play. So we are actually one down on CloudFormation and one up on Terraform. <laughs> uh, Terraform, yeah, of course, but we can do it too using CloudFormation, but we use Lambda, we need some triggers, third parties, permissions, and this is really time-taking, <laughs> really time-taking yeah. process. And usually we, we are uh, in DevOps, so we usually try to save our time. We not to be depend on third parties because of the security privileges, so, I think yeah, there's a one, there's a one and zero on the cloud formation side. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. So when we talk a little bit more in detail, you know, with the recent versions of Terraform, uh, we have something which uh, you know allows us to specify some constraints for some variables. So we can specify use only this, 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 this AMIs, or probably use only this set of uh, VM instance types. Uh, you can do some constraints on your variables. Now, what do you think about that aspect? Yeah, actually, uh, I'm I'm not mo more sure about the subject you are talking about, but yeah, uh, we are limited here uh, in Terraform that we need to be use this A V about this M E and this type. Yeah, here we just have some Terraform, but uh, I don't know about the subject more, so might be I can't explain in detail about this one. Cool. Cool. I mean, like, because when we think about cloud formation, I think we have been having this for a long time in terms of constraints uh, that we can set on our on all of our variables as allowed values. And we can mention that only you can take a value only from this allowed value. So that gives us the power and flexibility that, you know, you don't want someone in your team to go ahead and launch a virtual machine instance type, which is really big, right? So. It, it, it allows you to create something as a wrapper called as a module, and they can only specify values, which can only be taken from that module, but from only that specific list of constraints, right? And for Terraform also, you have this module concept, which is for CloudFormation, it came out very recently. It was not there for a long time, and CloudFormation brought out modules, and I was really happy that they brought it out because we could uh, you know, compete with something with the likes of Terraform. What do you think about Terraform modules? What do you think is the advantage or the power behind creating Terraform modules? Yeah, I think uh, uh, in more in the interviews, people really ask about the Terraform modules. And, uh, the reason behind is that uh, uh, you create a group and you can use it anywhere in the world. Uh, so you don't need to create again and again for, you know, it's really uh you save your time and uh, with the help of terraform modules you can link the uh, function uh modules with each other so they're really in groups uh so this is actually the power of terraform 
modules that uh, uh, how can we master terraform yeah this is actually the beauty of terraform modules that you can group a uh, group the functions and you can execute them so the uh, for example if you need uh, if you need some volumes you need an instance machine so you just create a module and link them with, the, with each other so Okay. So the, uh, this become a code beauty, and the other thing is uh, Terraform modules that uh, uh, they can really help to understand it, what's going on in the code. But if you does not yes. use the Terraform modules, it's really create complexity. So I think yeah. uh, everyone who sh uh, who is a beginner should learn about what are Terraform modules because uh, ninety percent of interview when it's come to DevOps, usually people ask about Terraform modules. What's it and how to use them? I mean, that, that's uh, pretty beautifully said, you know, that Terraform modules are one of the best practices of uh, Terraform. Like everyone should start writing modules. And Adil, could you tell us like, where could we find modules that are already written by the community? And is it possible for us to use those modules in our respective on, code? On GitHub, <laughs> GitHub. <laughs> uh, GitLab yeah. too, but uh, GitHub is actually one of the best and uh, a lot of people, Terraform is actually on uh, GitHub, so I usually recommend people that uh, a lot of people have medium blogs and they really give out that uh, I can share my medium blogs with them that uh, how to start Terraform with AWS. So this is yeah. my source code, fork, fork it and then use it for yourself. So a lot of people I think they do it uh, for free on GitHub so they can easily learn for them but they need an AWS account which have uh, they have a AWS account which have a root permission, so they can create a new one with their uh, accordingly. Like uh, I want to create an S3 bucket, so the new user have only permission to S3 bucket. So don't try to use your AWS account. <laughs> so <laughs> AWS root account actually that's not a good practice. I always yeah. said people in my sessions that don't try to use your root account. And AWS also said this because sometimes you're uh, in the code, you just really forget about your AWS secrets and AWS credentials, secret code and AWS access key. So another person can access it and this can be a really, really harmful. But sometimes AWS will send you out that, hey, on GitHub on this repository, you just have open AWS access key, which is in use. So delete it. So this is a beauty of AWS. Yeah. I mean, that's really I never nice. Did so it, but one, yeah. I never did it, but my fr friend just said me that he just, uh, you know, uh, uh, he just actually uh, put their credential in the GitHub code. And I just recommend we, him that we have it, GitHub secrets. You can add them yeah. to your GitHub secrets. And yeah. then uh, also we have Terraform Cloud. With the help yeah. of Terraform Cloud, we can create a workspace and we can also version controlling it, our source yeah. code. And uh, also I just wrote a blog on it that uh, uh, how to uh, manage uh, your AWS infrastructure as your infrastructure using Terraform Cloud and GitHub Actions. So this is actually yeah. the beauty of Terraform. Now you can manage your source code, your infrastructure using Terraform Cloud and, and GitHub. Oh, that's very nice. That's very nice. I mean, that's a great suggestion for our uh, end users over here because uh, before we go on to security, you know, in regards to cloud formation, uh, the reason why we write modules at the end of the day is because we want some best practices to be put into the business logic of that module, right? So we don't want someone to go ahead and um, insert a value, uh, something like a secret. We would possibly have it in yeah. the business logic. So probably to randomly generate a secret and store it in secrets manager and things like that. And the best thing about cloud formation and its modules is that I can also use a different service of AWS called a service catalog where wherever I write CloudFormation templates and I write it as modules, I can create it as a product with a portfolio in a service catalog. And anyone who launches that product and has the privileges to launch that product can only enter the values of the variables that can be allowed to enter, right? So you have some really nice best practices. For example, if suppose I would like to enforce 20 tags on all of my resources, I would put in that business logic into my CloudFormation module. I wouldn't allow anyone to go ahead and add any extra tags or probably overwrite any existing tags. I would have all of my necessary tags written inside my module itself. So when the resource is created, it already has 20 tags. So this kind of a strategy is really, really nice when we work with modules. So now coming towards the security aspects, when you mentioned about access key IDs and secret access keys and so on while working with a platform, what do you think is the best practice in terms of 
creating the resource using terraform what do you think should a person set on their cli do you think that they should set their credentials or do you think that they should use something like iam roles in terms of applying your terraform code onto an aws account first uh, i believe that uh, don't use your root account as i just said uh, again so another create account with limited permissions like if you are going to use s3 bucket lambda and ec2 give him permissions he need like you only want to write so only give him permission to write it's it's really complex first time it's really hard but aws pro aws provide iam simulator through which you can easily check out the user like while they have permissions he can access or deny anything they did it's just like a game and i usually give when when in my organization i provide people with permissions i provide them very limited permission that if they just have only access write permission read permission or they have just list permission or something so i ask them and then i check on iam simulator and then i just give them with the help of json and iam you know it's depend if you are using json or it's up to you so uh, you just wrote it down and then with the help you can also limit it them with the help of arm so uh, after this when you are done with your new account after this we have no access key and secret key in the terraform it depend uh, normally people just uh, add them to their local system when they are using they add them uh, and uh, i think you can also add them to your uh, code in terraform really provide your solution it's i think they, uh, I, i'm actually not more expert because terraform has such exam that board exam how you can uh, increase your security of terraform so when you are once you are just done with your secrets uh, now they are just providing terraform cloud in the terraform cloud the, they are just more powerful they just have uh, a lot of restriction that who can access your secrets who can't so they just provide a lot of sensitive sensitive uh, options to you know to secrets so i love terraform cloud that's why because uh, i'm not so much expert a security expert so i did not try my local system i more focused on my cloud and one if you are trying to provide it to your github try don't try to provide up into your code or don't try if you are using like git sometimes people just uh, really add this to code and they just replace but it's also save in their law, previous commit so try to remove such commits so uh, and also there are some all, all also availability scanners third party tools like sonar tool we have here we can also use them but it's really advanced things like when it's come to security for a normal person don't try to root for normal person like if we just talk about don't try to create use your root account create a new one and then uh, try to use terraform cloud and github secrets so you can easily uh, create a full security for yours i usually nice. uh, follow this practice and this this really save me up uh because uh, um, we are here to talk about beginner things like uh, the people really understand don't about the broad thing that yeah. how we can save the security don't people don't have access more advanced technologies like terraform really support uh, advanced uh, secrets and they just have world for this one but i'm not here to talk about this they just have a great world from where they just pick up the secrets and then you can use so i hope you know about this one terraform world yeah yeah of course of course i mean like when you, when you think about uh, secrets uh, handling in terraform aspects right on your local mm -hmm. machine it's always really nice that when you're working with different aws accounts you set all of your credentials in your credentials file and you set some profiles and then you start using those profiles by just setting your profile onto your uh, environment of your uh, command line and then you go ahead and use that respective profile to create the resources in that respective account right so that's one of the strategies but of course when you move towards something like uh, terraform cloud and so on it's automatically managed for you and it's uh, much more easier much more simpler to handle and the best practice again in terms of terraform is to always use something like iam roles and so on uh, rather than yes. hard coding your credentials and probably when you are working with multiple aws accounts having a cross account role uh, makes more sense uh, rather than again having multiple different set of credentials right but when it comes to cloud formation this is where it's much more simpler is cloud formation by default inherits the person's uh, permissions so if i am going ahead and executing a cloud formation template the permissions that i have is what cloud formation has but if at all i would like to provide cloud formation some additional permissions i can always associate an iam role 
uh, to my CloudFormation stack that I'm yeah. creating so that it has some additional permissions to create resources to which even I may not have the permissions. So this is where when it comes to cloud formation, things are a little bit more easy in terms of uh, handling uh, the execution of the templates and so on. Yeah. So uh, let's move on to the next topic in terms of Terraform, you know. So with Terraform, we spoke about that modules is one of the best practices. We spoke about secrets yes. and the way that you use IAM roles and so on. What do you think in terms of cross account? If <coughs> Sorry. If I want to deploy my cloud, sorry, my Terraform uh, module across multiple AWS accounts, how simple it is to do that? And what do you think are some of the automation best practices behind that? So, uh, if you want to use Terraform with your multiple account, Terra with the help of multiple, uh, yeah. I, I, actually I use uh, more Terraform. So for this, I create workspaces. So workspaces yeah. really help me to differentiate them. So how about you? For me, it's workspaces. Okay, that's very nice because with cloud formations, we write a stack and then we write something called as a stack set. And that stack set allows us to go ahead and execute our cloud formation template across multiple regions, across multiple accounts. So that's one of the best how, practices. How of about, CF. How about yeah. we have uh, how about we have staging environment? We have production and we don't want that uh, our change will deploy it to production. So how cloud formation can manage it? And okay, through Terraform, we have workspaces again. Yeah. Uh, through yeah. we can manage multiple accounts, multiple environments. So it's yeah. really easy that we have different workspaces, different people are working on it. So different uh, environment are set to them, different accounts. So workspaces are really powerful there. So, but for the cloud formation, how we can manage them? Uh, that's a very nice question because we can do this in two ways. Uh, the first one is if suppose you have only one single template that you are going to apply to four different environments, you can have a variable itself as your environment, as a list, and you can choose which variable you want. So let's say it's dev QA stage prod. All of your resources are going to be appended with that variable. So now you have all the resources with different resource identifiers with the environment name in the resource identifier and all deployed onto a single account or to multiple accounts. So having an environment name as a variable is great. The other way of doing this is, let's say I have separate accounts one separate account for dev one for qa one for stage and one for prod i can of course go ahead and use something like a ci cd pipeline which we are going to discuss next you know so we can go with a ci cd pipeline have your cloud formation code in a github repository or in a source version control and have four different branches where you manage four different environments so in that way you have four different pipelines so if i had to do this completely aws native I would put my cloud formation code into code commit four different branches because code pipeline is tied with one branch. So I'll have one pipeline for dev, one for QA, one for stage, one for prod, cross account IAM role for code pipeline, centralized shared services account where I would have this entire infrastructure. And then code pipeline would assume that respect to IAM role if it's the dev account, code pipeline would execute the cloud formation in the dev account. If it's the QA, code pipeline would execute in the QA account by just assuming a cross account role created in each and every account. But this entire infrastructure of code commit, code build and code pipeline would sit in a shared services account. And I would have dev QA stage prod as my four different accounts and using cross account IAM roles, code pipeline will be responsible for creating my resources there. So two different ways of doing it. Yeah. So uh, the question in my mind that uh, if I don't want to use CI, CD for uh, like Azure uh, AWS services, like I don't want to use them uh, and yeah. I want to use Azure Devo uh, for this or other like Jenkins we have, we have TeamCity or uh, for deployment we have Octopus. So does CloudFormation allow us to integrate with third parties? Of course, because at the end of the day, it's just a YAML file, right? So when you think about it, let's say you use Jenkins, you just provide your credentials in Jenkins. Uh, you probably go ahead and switch because if you use Terraform, you can switch workspace in Jenkins itself, right? Yes. But when you use CloudFormation, you either go with the variable way that I mentioned or have separate branches for separate environments. And then of course, at the end of the day, use AWS CLI commands or use the CloudFormation CLI in terms of creating your resources, which waits until the template is created and also gives you continuous feedback of what's exactly happening 
during your resource creation right with terraform of course you see it as an output as a beautiful output you see it what's happening terraform plan and apply you see everything with cloud formation it's just that you need to find the right cli command you need to probably specify a wait flag so that you wait until all the resources are created cloud formation gives the feedback to jenkins that your resources have been completely created and now it's fine yeah this would probably be the way that you would integrate with other ci cd out there yeah awesome awesome so uh, yeah uh, my confusions are really clear about cloud formation <laughs> we can go <laughs> ahead Nice, nice. uh, cool so with terraform you know you you mentioned recently that you uh, wrote an article with github actions and with uh, terraform yes. cloud and first of all could you tell our audience whether terraform cloud is free yeah terraform cloud is absolutely free but their enterprise is depend on your team size uh, like uh, they are just free for five person they can use them free of course but if you have a large scale enterprise you want you have a big organization so you really need to pay but let's talk about the one person who want to practice the get of actions get and uh, terraform cloud that's absolute free for you you can create workspaces you can use secrets uh, and uh, you can also create organization totally free of course yeah yeah that's wonderful that's wonderful so when you say that you know we can integrate terraform cloud with github actions and so on what would be your different stages because CI/CD pipelines at the end of the day are, you know, it's a mindset, it's a thought process. Everyone does it in a different way because DevOps is a principle. Yeah. It's it, it's not something that is set in stone that you have to do it this way. So for you, for a beginner, uh, what would possibly be the basic set of steps that you would do in your uh, Terraform uh, with a CI/CD pipeline? So, uh, so in my mind, I started with AWS, create account, assign him a role. And then uh, with limited permission, yeah, yeah, you just need to only create an EC2. So I just give him uh, the only EC2 permissions. And then finally, I just create an account and just need to create a Terraform Cloud account. Terraform account is totally free. You can create a one according uh, using your email address or your organization email address. Once you're done, you can you now need to create an organization. You can create your organization with your own name, or you can use your uh, organization in this up to you once you're done now you need to create a workspace it's a, just a one click that you just click and just create. you just provide to give him a name and just then it will create an organization like it's so easy and once you're done with the creation of organization now you need to create a workspace workspace this is here we actually talking about that you have different source code. You can just differentiate them with the help of workspaces. You have different accounts, AWS accounts, so you can easily differentiate them with the help of Terraform workspace. You have different CI/CD. You can easily differentiate them with the help of Terraform workspaces. So once you create the Terraform workspace, now you need to provide your organization token to GitHub Actions. We have a, I just have a GitHub Actions code which is actually in in YAML. In the YAML, it just only did that uh, it will just uh, look for your organization token, access your organization. And once it access to your organization, it will ask you about which workspace is it. You will need to provide the workspace name. And once you just did, it will just you check out your port like main.tf, anything. If you, I just only provide main.tf because I was actually just practicing. So you can provide more port, it's up to you. But it's a good practice is to use multiple files or in Terraform. Like if you have some variables, output, and uh, other files, you need to create different files. Once you're done with it, uh, it will just uh, once you push your changes to GitHub. If you were like, uh, I just for practices, I just create an EC2 with T2 Nano, and then I just change like uh, I'll change my mind, or I just want to T2 Micro. So it will trigger a CI uh, GitHub actions like CI/CD. So it will just uh, continuously integrate, check your code, and after this, it will deploy to Terraform, and Terraform deploy your changes to your infrastructure, which is actually AWS. So this is how easy for you. Like if you want to work on uh, staging, you create a new branch uh, on GitHub, change your code, push your changes to another workspace, good to go. Very nice, very nice. I, I think you know Terraform Cloud has automated most of the aspects that what we would possibly yeah. do. Uh, through some basic Terraform commands on our local environment and so on. So uh, another classic question, you know, uh, that uh, you know, that how is asked much, during. Yeah. yeah. How However, much it empower? Yeah. How much it's it empower our local community that uh, if any person 
who is going to start up have a startup he want to implement its devops technologies like how much terraform provide him facility free of cost like you can use 5% like if you have only one person just go go ahead it's so easy you can easily implement your complete infrastructure from blogs or anything like free resources so i'm not actually talking about the big organizations they just have a big main frame system and all of stuff but here let's talk about a startup who is going to start who don't have money so how much terraform is involved with them and github also they can uh, create their devop infrastructure absolutely absolutely so true that's why you know in today's world we see so many startups right who are born and brought up in the cloud and the reason why they are born and brought up in the cloud is because they have the agility uh, which is the speed of the cloud and at the same time yes. the power of automation with something like terraform to create the infrastructure uh, with really good best practices in place another classic question that's usually asked is how do you manage your pr workflows uh, with terraform you know this is usually asked in interviews that i just don't want to do a terraform plan apply a destroy and all that how do you usually manage your pull request workflows with terraform what would you yeah. have in your stages over there yeah. so uh, i i will definitely provide my github repository here in, in the comments uh, section but here is a workflow which i follow and they just take a lot of my time you know if you just if a user let's for example i'm not the owner anyone else just go and push their chainings and he just you know do something first i need to lock my main branch this is the thing and the second thing is in the github actions i will uh, like i can use as you just told me you, in the declarative languages you need to have an idea about if else like it's really important so so they there is a simple logic that if there is a pull request and when when it will be improved approved then you need to uh, apply and initialize otherwise it will skip the all of the method and it will just say hey the cr is not created skipping it so this is what i just did that if the, there is no pr user can't make changes to the main branch which is actually a master branch for some people but is all you can also use main branch or master branch you need to if you want to make any change you need to create a new branch and they will create a pr request and you need to add me as a reviewer because i'm the core manager uh, of the repository and then when i just approve my changes then it will just initialize terraform terraform apply and terraform plan to my terraform cloud otherwise it will just skip this method and just because this is really important like uh, uh, people can easily go to your you know uh, they can for they can easily post and sometimes uh, is uh, sometimes people really merge them without so here we need to add a reviewer it will merge and then the github action will start of course of course then i mean the way that i would possibly handle a pr workflow on cloud formation would possibly be the similar way but i would have some more stages in place so i would first probably go ahead and uh, check the quality of the code i would then go ahead and check to see if there are any security vulnerabilities in the code level so let's say for example that they have gone ahead and exposed uh, their security group as 0.0.0.0/0 which no one should possibly do right so these kinds of checks is what i would possibly do during my uh, pull request workflow and i would use something like cfn nag cfn lint and uh, cfn guard uh, which are three open source projects uh, from cloud formation from aws labs itself which allows us to go ahead and have some policies and some security uh, policies which uh, the, i mean ensure that you have compliance and governance and then i would possibly allow a person to go ahead and merge it to the master branch only if my pull request workflow build is successful and the code is of a really good quality and the test reports are uh, top notch only then i would push it to the master branch to kick off the flow of actually executing the cloud formation template so when we talk about something in regards to linting and in terms of you know security workflows for terraform i mentioned something for cloud formation which is cfn lint guard and nag what do you think that you would possibly use for terraform Uh, for terraform we have a uh, terraform kitchen uh, which we can use for these purposes and the purpose is same it will just check out your configuration and all of these stuff yeah uh, that's very nice it's very nice and if i had to add one more for terraform you know i would say that there are these uh, third party people out there in the market someone like checkovi uh, there are uh, other uh, third party tools like inspec which are which is part of the chef uh, product right so inspect allows you to write some uh, test codes and all that 
Uh, but that would be in ruby language which is again something that someone has to study right but then it all, it, it gives you really nice um, uh, flexibility there is also tf lint of course uh, which allows you to create they, some they, security they policies open source, and so on open yeah. open source really empower people uh, really empower our communities and there are so many awesome open source tools that if we can discuss them they, they this will be a very long talk so people can easily explore that uh, but they need to be have an idea about the regularities how they can scan the code they need really have an idea about this and how they can implement to in into their repository uh, how uh, this is really important but there are actually a lot of uh, really cool open source tools uh, which uh, are usually a lot of them are free pretty awesome so we have actually crossed one more really nice best practice over here which is the pull request workflow and to always ensure that you security check your code and so on because when we work with something like terraform cloud we also have sentinel policies uh, that we can enforce over there to ensure that you use the right amis you have some necessary tags and so on so this is also one of the other best practices so our audience have actually got three best practices today think about modules at all points of time to always ensure you have a ci cd workflow and a pull request workflow which allows you to create these security checks and all that uh, it's pretty awesome yeah. and don't ever hard code your credentials of access key id and, and don't use your root account really important because you have a billing setup here so if you use it then you need to pay a huge bug so you need to check awesome. uh, you need to create a new one yeah also for the zero also if you are using azure when you can also create a new with the, if you have ad tenant permission active directory permission you can create a new user and uh, and then you can use the user to do it yourself but for terraform i think aws terraform such a great bonding it's very easy yeah. to use but for <laughs> azure uh, you need to use uh, four credentials like you need to provide your tenant and user id oh, yeah. and uh, your access key so uh, but for aws you only need to provide two secrets and this yeah. is really, that's why i really love these two combination aws and terraform but Absolutely. the combination yeah but with azure uh, people really ask about people usually use terraform on azure system like you can use azure cloud shell to ex to manage uh, all of your infrastructure also azure provide bicep and uh, arm template through you can manage their automation with the help of them so there are a lot of tools but always the best practices which need to be followed yeah absolutely so as you absolutely. Just explain I, I, the best practices yeah. of course of course of course you know i would i would always say use something that's synonymous with iam roles across all cloud based platforms something like service principles on azure and then you use uh, something again very similar to that on the gcp with your service accounts and so on so that would possibly give you a lot of uh, really good best practices because the credentials are always refreshed in the background and only the person who is associated with that service account or service principal will be able to create these resources at the end of the day and what amount of policies and roles that is associated with it is what permissions or authorization that they will possibly have you know that's pretty brilliant so we would possibly come towards the end of the session where we talk about some tricky aspects you know what if you know there is some resource in terraform that is not supported at all but it's supported in cloud formation uh, what would you possibly do can you please yeah for sure so let's say for example that there is a resource that aws recently brought out but usually mm -hmm. you know usually the way it works is terraform actually has that first then cloud formation brings it right but mm -hmm. what if suppose let's consider a use case where terraform does not have it but cloud formation has it so how would you possibly go about creating that resource if you're still a terraform person uh, why i love more terraform uh, as compared to cloud formation because of their multi management and which cloud formation can provide as you just told me but it's really tricky so yeah. this is what love about terraform but what terraform did not have but cloud formation has or uh, yeah. like they just yeah, prob have probably let's this. say let's say that there is a brand new aws service cloud formation yeah, has this, it this is, this is really a tricky question thinking yeah. about that terraform did not have cloud formation because usually terraform have all, all the services which cloud formation have 
but there might be a one because you are senior you have more knowledge oh, yeah. than me but <laughs> <laughs> yeah this so, is more of just a trick question but then i mean the answer is very simple uh, you just use mm-hmm. the cloud formation uh, resource type with terraform you know you just do mm-hmm. aws underscore cloud formation underscore uh, resource uh, with terraform and then you go ahead and create your cloud formation template in terraform itself and then you do terraform init plan and apply so it's it's not about two different tools at the end of the day if there is something that is supported in cf but not in tf you still can write it in cf and call it from tf it's possible and let's say for example and, that there is something in terraform yeah. terraform could not code in json or yaml for this we need to be have scl and scl cannot be uh, you know supported on cloud formation so this is also one <laughs> No, I mean, I mean, just think about this. So let's say that uh, there is this cloud formation resource type called, sorry, there is this Terraform resource type called as AWS underscore cloud formation underscore resource, right? Or underscore stack where you can pass your template in JSON itself. And Terraform can populate that JSON and that YAML into a cloud formation template because at the end of the day, whatever infrastructure as code tool that we explore out there, they have to be compatible with cloud formation APIs. If they are not compatible, you can never create that resource on the AWS platform. Because at the end of the day, all these uh, tools out there, including Pulumi and all of them, they are translated into APIs that CloudFormation understands. That's so if sub, yeah. So if suppose so something example, that is there's a tool, yeah. like if we want to create clusters, uh, we have a tool like EKS Control. Uh, they also use CloudFormation API. If this doesn't support the tool is nothing is is just uh they, people will not log it yeah if that's true people uh, you need to be have a cloud formation aws API, uh for the yeah. integration yes and uh, for them we have Absolutely. for this year, the case is also same for google the case is also same <laughs> yeah, yeah that's very true very true but what if suppose there is something that is not supported in cloud formation but is there in terraform i have two aspects right i can either write a custom lambda function which i always can do but the other aspect which I mentioned at the start is there is this open source project out there that allows you to uh, insert each and every Terraform resource as a cloud formation resource into the cloud formation registry. So I use that open source project to translate all of my Terraform resources into cloud formation known resources. So now in my cloud formation template, I can say TF colon colon S3 colon colon bucket. I can say TF colon colon EC2 colon colon instance and I can pass the necessary parameters. So if suppose there is something that is not supported by Terraform, uh, but it's there in CloudFormation, it's still possible. If there is something that's not supported in CloudFormation and it's there in Terraform, it's still possible. So at the end of the day, you know, it, it, it matters more about the preference of the organization, whether they are completely AWS native or whether they would like to create resources across multiple platforms or even manage something like third-party resources like Megaport or new relic or datadoc with third party providers or also use some really nice small providers like random which allows you to create random passwords and random usernames and store that onto secrets manager so that you don't expose any kind of credentials in your terraform plan as well as in your terraform code so that's the flexibility i believe that terraform brings onto the plate and i believe that cloud formation over a period of time has learned from Terraform, from what they bring onto the plate. And we are right now at this point of time, uh, expanding more on the horizontal so that we not only think of AWS, but we think of other different aspects like probably creating a Datadog resource and so on. So I would highly uh, recommend people to explore the CloudFormation registry and the modules from third parties that are already there and try to launch those resources at least once to understand that Terraform, sorry, that CloudFormation is not just only about AWS. They are expanding their horizon at this point of time. So do you have Actually, any- I think uh, they need to, they need yeah. to uh, because CloudFormation is really a great tool for your infrastructure automation. Uh, and AWS, so from AWS, sometimes you have on-prem services, sometimes you need to access your resource. So they really need to expand themselves uh, for the third parties, giving them third parties options. You can integrate them. Yeah, it's really cool. But still, Terraform 
uh, really help you out to uh, at the right moment they can help you out with your infra multi cloud infrastructure management and with the help of their vault security they provide you high security to save your credentials but for aws we have kms and a lot of like uh, security mm -hmm. services uh, uh, and AWS is really great in security and they expect. So it's not about cloud formation, Terraform. It's all about how you can, uh, how, which principle you follow for the automation. And it's up in the end, yeah. it's really depend on the person, which tool he's yeah. going to use. Of course, of course. And I would possibly uh, end by saying that, you know, that anything and everything can be automated. It's just that you have to find the right uh, set of tools and the right people in your organization to automate everything end to end you know so but before that you know before we go on to the q and a's and all that uh, aril what do you think about uh, this is a tricky one what do you think about azure's adoption that recently surpassed aws's adoption so aws dropped down to 77% according to a survey and azure went up to 80% so did you ever think from the time that you started studying something like aws and azure did you ever think that Azure would surpass the cloud adoption than AWS? What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, yeah actually, uh, AWS, uh, I don't know, but AWS is a uh, mother of the cloud. They are just really old. Uh, and then we have Azure. But uh, when I just love, uh, we learn about Azure, about this education, I found Azure really helpful and a great cloud. Uh, like uh, it's uh, it's cheaper than is AWS. The one thing, and they just provide more solutions. Like they provide more tools. They just have uh, in Azure. We have uh, like in AWS, we have only two hundred and twelve services right now. But in Azure, we have six thousand services. So this is a this, this is a lot. Like like two hundred and twelve services in AWS right now, and in Azure, we have six thousand services. So actually. Uh, I know I, I wasn't having no idea that AWS Azure will surpass as AWS, but these are really a great clouds and it's really depend on the marketplace. Uh, so that's of one course. actually a tricky one because I, I here I'm actually more believe on multi cloud. I love Google Cloud as or AWS, so I can't say that this need to be surpassed because it's not about the marketplace, about their competition. It's the choice of the user if. Uh, yeah. AWS is cheaper for them. We are here to give them services. Yeah, we. Yeah. I'm here to provide you some AWS services. If Azure is cheaper for them, they can go for it. Uh, but usually, end of the day, uh, AWS is a DevOps cloud. Google is a developer cloud, and Azure is also more focused toward development. But in the end, AWS really a good choice for DevOps. Yeah, yeah. that's very found. nice. Yeah, very nicely said. Very nicely said, Adil. You know, so let's probably move on to some of the Q and A's. I think we just have only two questions from our audience and people who are watching. If you have any other questions, this would be the time that you could possibly post it. So I'm just going to click on the first question to bring it onto the screen. So I am an Azure DevOps engineer. Uh, which infrastructure as code I can learn, like ARM templates or Terraform or CloudFormation? So if you're an Azure DevOps person, uh, probably not CloudFormation. Uh, but then, Adil, what are your thoughts on Azure ARM templates uh, versus Terraform? Uh, if he has just good skill set on YAML, JSON, he can do on cloud formation on Azure ARM tablets. Also, Azure have one more service called Bicep. He can also learn to automate their infrastructure, Azure infrastructure. But here, if he want to learn about Terraform, he need to learn the Hashi Corporation language, for which a lot of sample codes are available on their website and also on the GitHub platform. So in the end, if uh, but if he just have a good uh, command on YAML or JSON, because you, uh, I think I more prefer JSON. What do you say? What do you prefer? Like JSON is I, really I, I, easy I to you. I don't want to work on brackets. I I hate brackets. <laughs> I I oh, love okay. working with the, the YAML. Yeah, the YAML at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So for of YAML, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's I think one uh, course on YouTube. Uh, that you can easily learn about. Uh, YAML or so after YAML learning, so he can easily implement on cloud formation as well. I think limited to only one cloud is not. Uh, I think everyone need to be have uh, focus toward multi cloud. The I I believe that uh, only limited to one cloud uh, can be harmful. What do you say? 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, this. Uh, it's, I mean, not about, it's not about Jack. Uh, well, it's not about the court you usually use that uh, master uh, jackal of our master of none. It's not about that. It is simply mm-hmm. a cloud. If you have a focus on cloud technologies, you can grab easily Google Cloud, Azure, or AWS because the infrastructure is the same. Just we have a naming convention like in AWS we have EC2, in Azure we have VM, in Google we have compute. We have Lambda here, we have function there, and we have there, Google function there. So, so on. Like, services name in change, but the way of their working is not different. They are same, actually. So, what do you say? Yep. Uh, that's absolutely true. And I would say that the next few years are going to be very important for people who learn multi cloud. The more so, the reason because you have really amazing people in the market whose um, you know, kids are at this point of time writing certifications, exams across platforms. So, Let's consider the industry three years back when I started. Uh, three years back, cloud certifications was more of a, a really nice criteria of getting a job. So when you had a cloud certification with you, it was more of the importance that you could do what you learned over there. But right now, at this point of time, and even two more years into the future, cloud certifications will more become a qualifying criteria for a job, but they would still go ahead and uh, drill you a lot in depth in regards to what you're done practically. So which means the next few years for a multi-cloud based platform, because I said this two years before in one of the YouTube lives, I said this that you know the industry is expecting AWS slash Azure. They are expecting only one of them. But right now the industry is expecting AWS comma Azure. The slash has become a comma, which means in the near future we are gonna see more and more expectations because the market value of someone is pretty huge when they know something like multi-cloud compared to knowing just one cloud-based platform. So it's again more of a preference. Do you want 20 lakhs an annum within two years of experience or do you want 8 lakhs an annum at the end of two years? So if you want more money for yourself, you want to take, take much better care of your families, if you want to gain more knowledge and the money would automatically come into your pocket, you should become a multi-cloud person, but then cloud will become more of the normal. It has already become a normal. Something that is more new, something that is much more interesting is automation, something that we are talking about, which is only implemented 25 to 30% in the industry. Something again, which is also synonymous with this is, we never spoke about YAML definition files for Kubernetes and how do you deploy it in a GitOps approach using Argo CD and all that, right? So that's also something that is, again, getting a lot of traction in the market. No one wants to execute kubectl f apply and all those commands. They want to look for something that is really automated, something that's like Terraform Cloud at the end of the day. So these are tools and technologies that are, that are going to become more and more the normal in the next few years. And someone who learns it at this point of time who can implement it at this point of time for different industries in IT. It's not domains, it's industries, financial industry, agricultural industry, government-based organizations. There are so many different industries where the adoption rate of cloud and the adoption rate of Kubernetes and something even like service mesh and all that is very low. But if someone at this point of time studies all this and can bring that adoption level higher, you will actually set a standard for people who are behind you. People who are graduating in college, no one knew that they would do cloud certifications one year before. No one knew that. But now you have so many people doing that. So the more and more you set standards for yourself, the more and more people like Adil and myself give back to the community, the more and more the quality of education and the standard of education improves back in our countries. So that's that's primarily the end goal, I would say. Yeah, that's the best way to put it, I think. So oh, awesomely said. So cool. yeah, uh, now students are more focused toward cloud. Cloud is now a normal thing. Uh, people really convert themselves for the multi-cloud and, and their management because organization also looking for the multi-cloud management. And there are also uh, open source tools uh, which from where you can manage multiple cloud. There's a one called Mist. Mist is actually used to control the multi-cloud and it's an open source tool. You can use it to 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 uh, manage your IBM cloud, Google cloud, or other cloud. Amazing. Uh, so yeah, so multi-cloud awesome. management is the new thing now. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. Really nice. 
uh, let's take a look at uh, Vishal's question. I think we did answer this at the start of the session. So how we can master, I mean, I wouldn't say master, first of all, start off with CloudFormation and Terraform and take a look at this video at the start, Vishal, as to how we discussed, you know, uh, getting, so I, I would just put in a single sentence, you know, getting to know uh, about a cloud-based platform, first of all, getting to know a declarative and functional programming language, and then getting to know something like Terraform and CloudFormation, and then creating resources back to back where a Jiva's question comes into play and I'm just gonna put it onto the screen and I would like Adil's view on it. You know, so in regards to automation and in regards to practical implementations, what kind of projects would you suggest, uh, Adil, for Jiva to get into the basic master and advanced level of Terraform and CF? Yeah. So let me first add uh, to Vishal's question. Uh, yeah. The one thing, certifications uh, really help you out uh, to get yourself uh, to get yourself expertise more and more for Terraform or for cloud formation. For the cloud formation, he can go for AWS cloud practitioner and then he need to decide whether he need to go for developer or solution architect. It's really depend on Vishal. For Terraform, he can go for Terraform association. Because tar uh, certification is really a path. It just gives you a path. Like uh, if I want to learn something AWS, what will you suggest? You will really suggest me cloud practitioner exam because these can help me to know about what is cloud. And, and if I want to have my more expertise on AWS, I need to have another exam. It's really depend on me. For me, I will go for AWS developer exam because it's more easier than solution architect and system operate. <laughs> and then I will go for <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, it a lot of research on what I did. So finally decide. And then I will go for AWS DevOps exam. DevOps exam. So this is how I decide myself. How can I master myself uh, into, into this? So you can go, you can follow the certification, but the purpose of certification must be learning not to be memorize the things is this this yeah. you really, really need to think about think about this now let's yeah. talk about Jiva question so what kind of projects would you possibly suggest him i mean like how to get started because when i think about cloud formation i can tell people that you know you have these uh, aws solutions page which is aws.amazon.com slash solutions you have so many different solutions over there as cloud formation templates which you can just click on one launch button and then automatically you get to know all the different resources that are created through that. The other best place that I would suggest is the AWS workshops, right? So that there also you have so many different, you know, workshops as step-by-step -step walkthroughs where you have some cloud formation involved and so on. And then of course you have skill builder, which they released recently. So these are the three resources I would suggest for someone to find project-based practical content for cloud formation. So what would be your suggestion for Terraform? For, for Terraform, when I just get started, it's really depend on you. You are going for free resource or paid. Let's talk about the free resources here. First, uh, Medium and Dev2 really just have great blogs with hands-on and they really help, authors really help you out uh, that uh, how to get started with Terraform. Let's get started with Terraform and AWS. So for this, they really help you out how, what is HCL language, declarative language. And then they just really talk about how to create a main dot by how to add for your configuration secrets and, you know, simply step by step. And then you just have an idea about how modules are work, how to create multiple, how to use multiple files in Terraform. So I think this is step by step process. And uh, I found really great blogs on Medium and Dev2. Finally, uh, when you learn these basics, uh, you can also found the source code on GitHub, and there's a Udemy Z uh, Nova course on uh, Terraform on Udemy. I really recommend people this course. This course really helped me out. It's paid, but uh, might be this, but Z really provide discount. And uh, but you know, you really if you want to upgrade yourself, you need to invest on yourself. This is, uh, if you did not invest on yourself, uh, you will not have any improvement in your life. Uh, we really improve our dressing and, but we really, uh, if we are in DevOps, uh, I really improve myself. I have some subscription, I invest on myself. I, I learn on the daily basis. I always have my mind and how I need, have, like 
for example uh, how uh, like i think in my mind like with when it's come to terraform for example that how github integrated with terraform so i researched on it and i just found the solution implement them and then make myself a second step like do i didn't bunker for myself that yeah. first do I, i'm a, like a lot of things that doesn't in my like github as they were like let's just use the you know divide and conquer rule divide and then we can finally achieve it so there are actually a lot of resources i i usually tell people you just only need the internet to get started linkedin really have a great resource you can have research you can just filter them out by using post a lot of people provide coupons for terraform Yep. what can i just post there's a lot of resources <laughs> of course of course you of just course. only need you, you just only need to you just have time laptop internet and accounts to get started <laughs> in simple words <laughs> of course of course i mean very, very true very true very true you know uh, but then i mean other than having all these resources in your hands uh, there are a lot of people out there who uh, still don't uh, do it and the reason is because i mean at the end of the day i believe we are all human beings right so which means we need to embody certain values and characteristics so we need to have a curious attitude right we need to ensure that whatever someone explains we ask the why question not not the what and how the why question is the curiosity right and then that person should always have the can do attitude you face a problem today you may not find the solution today but then if you are at it every single day maybe one day you will find the solution because your knowledge is increasing every single day which is the can do attitude right and on the other hand you should go through a lot of blogs and videos and tutorials and to do all this you just need to have an entrepreneurial mindset to go through to take the time to go through all this and then you should always find like minded people right uh, people whom you can find on linkedin and you can create a community for yourself like the aws community and so on so that's the together aspects right and then finally you should at least have the interest teach someone to uplift the society and that's the crafts people right so you have to embody certain values and certain characteristics and only if you do that you will at least concern, because i would like to add i would like to add here sorry to for to interrupt if yeah. you uh, if you teach people the concepts are really clear like when i have to give people sessions workshops uh, these really uh, help me Uh, it's really ha- helped me to improve my hands on because i am going to represent like in in the front of 100 people i'm going to hands on so i do myself that there are no no error twice like uh, in front of 100 people if you are just giving an error they will say oh man he did not know how to do it <laughs> so for, from this failure you are just trying to give your best when you are going to give your best you are now become an expert so if uh, you are a person who is going to learn uh first learn it yourself and then help other to do it so if they are in uh, and encourage them uh, first of all so as you just told uh, earlier that uh, that a lot of people just have internet laptop but they still did not do uh, it's all about the passion i think uh, uh, if anyone have a passion to become a doctor so no one can stop it's really about passion uh if you want to be a devops engineer then there are a lot of resources for you but if you don't want to become that you just have a cs degree or sc degree or it degree in your hand and you just believe that only my degree can help me to uh, to be into like google microsoft and then i think might be is wrong might be is true it depends but still there is a passion to pursue everything passion is really important and hard working these tools are really important and part of life what do you say yeah that's it's very true man i don't have to add any other words to it because <laughs> at the end of the day you may have everything but if you don't have the curiosity as well as the passion to learn something even at 6 years of experience or 10 years of experience that's growth because at each and every point of time in your career you will reach a saturation point you will feel like maybe there is nothing more that i could possibly do but at that point of time having the curiosity and the passion to learn more and to learn more technology and to implement more that's what will set you aside that will make you stand out in a crowd and that's just the beauty of it because that's a characteristic of you that you embody and you share that with other people so that they can also be that way you know uh, probably i think we will move on to the last question uh, it's it's a lot of time yes. today and i have to say thanks to you for taking the time you know uh, so selva kumar is a, a desktop service engineer 
he's looking to start his career in cloud so what would be your advice in terms of just the basics the path to start off what do you tell to you to the people that usually ask you you know so there is someone who comes to you adil i want to go ahead and become an expert on aws i want to learn azure what would be your starting point my starting point will be certifications and stephen merrick course <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely, absolutely. I, I think, uh, yeah he's, he's I, I think, genius yeah. Yeah. he's genius yeah. when it's come to aws stephen merrick is uh, when i started my journey uh, i found a stephen merrick course totally free of cost uh, because you sometime he uh, prom give promo on linkedin uh actually i'm not here to i'm not sponsor of stephen merrick but i really appreciate the person uh, the what he is doing for aws and kafka community that a yeah. lot of people might be span i'm one of them and uh, for aws i really recommend people go for stephen uh, close your eyes and just buy, purchase his course yeah. but sometime uh, you just need to wait uh or might be you if any of your friend have an udemy account <laughs> you can borrow borrow it so but in the end of the day stephen mary course is really help me out and he if he want to be a aws expert or then this uh, first uh, he need to find out the right path of certification then uh, like for me uh, i just choose aws cloud practitioner developer and devops uh and and it really depend on the selva kumar that he want to be a solution architect devops engineer then the path will be changed so once he decides the certification path and i think stephen mary course can be really helpful and yeah what do you say i i think i think that's the best answer because there's no one uh, i believe at this point of time in the industry you know 2017 16 uh, there was only one guy uh, his name was ryan krunenberg Uh, as part of a cloud guru he was the only guy who put out a course for solutions high tech associate at that point of time uh, then you had so many authors putting out on floral site and so on but at this point of time i would say that there is no one better than stephen marek for cert aspects so if you want to yeah. just go for a certification there is no one better than him for giving you the actuals to giving you the content in a concise and precise manner i i think uh, he he's one of the best people i would love to probably bring, bring him on the channel once and try to have a conversation with him if he is listening to this uh, but it's impossible <laughs> but maybe someday maybe someday you know yeah it but uh, i think soon. yeah for sure for sure i mean anything and everything is possible uh, that's automation all the way for you guys so i mean uh, first of all uh, a huge thanks uh, to adil for taking out his uh, time today to talk to us for close to 1 hour and 20 minutes and it's 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 been a great experience because we have given you guys a lot of really nice good practices best practices that you can follow and take back some bullet points from this for your uh, interviews that you would possibly attend in the next few months and so on so adil would you like to say some closing words uh, before we go completely off words uh, will be that if you uh, if you are aws uh, sir become aws certified and if you are a student or you have some financial issues first of all join the aws community builder program they provide you aws academy cloud academy access they provide you associate level and expert level cert uh, certification free of course besides this you only need to help people you only write blogs videos conversation uh, so i think this can also help you out. so aws community builder is a really a great choice who want to you know pursue his journey toward aws if he has financially otherwise yeah. if you are if you have don't have anything i would like to add because we can't ignore people or uh, who, who are on their early stage and they just have actually when i just started i was having some financial issues and then uh, and now i'm investing on myself to make myself better but i can think so that a lot of people might be have so aws uh, cloud uh, aws uh, community builder program can be a good one but besides this you need to uh, contribute to the community back <laughs> they only want of this <laughs> of course so of course of course but this is uh, that uh, automation or the principle for the automation is really important besides if you are using a uh, telephone uh, if you are using any infrastructure as a core tool it's really depend and the learning path uh, need to be more focused uh, than grabbing things like what is telephone 
and nobody asks you about this. Everyone asks you how we can implement Create Labs, implement them, and that's all from my side. If you want to add anything, else, yeah. Oh, cool, on. awesome. I mean, like AWS Community Builder also gives you a very nice uh, water bottle. Uh, very similar to what Adil has and what I yeah. have. So. <laughs> yeah, that's <also> what <laughs> <So>, GitHub. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. So, probably uh, apply for Community Builder uh, the same way that Adil mentioned uh, to all of our audience uh, to yeah, get right. more. Uh, uh, nowadays, I am actually reading Elon Musk's book. So, oh. big fan <laughs> of Elon Musk too. <laughs> Might be one day you'll be on your channel too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would love for all of that to happen. Yeah, but for sure, I mean, it we will work towards it. It's all about passion. It's all, the, you will find the right people when it's all about passion. And uh, that that's all. And you always learn from the people who, have, who are passionate, who want to contribute to, to the community. You're always a big fan of them. I'm, I'm actually a big fan. What you are doing for the community is your sessions. But I, I uh, did not have, uh, I did not understanding Tamil language. Sorry. Oh, yeah. But... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, because we uh, we majorly wanted to do it in our own uh, language, uh, more so because mm -hmm. uh, I mean there is a lot of there are a lot of people back in India, and I think you can relate to it, uh, who have not learned, uh, you know, uh, in an English medium uh, school or something like that, right? So that's one of the reasons why we wanted to completely do it in our native language. But then the more and more we grow, uh, the more we attract people from across the entire world. So in that way, we do occasional videos in English, uh, but rest of the videos are all in Tamil, uh, more so because, yeah, like I said, uh, that's very close to our heart. Yeah. I'm actually following this agenda, and also I am doing this job for GitOps and DevOps for my community, for my people in Urdu. It's similar to very Hindi nice. too. Uh, yeah. So same agenda, <laughs> and I, I love to see you on my channel too. But still, I just have I have very less people. Like uh, I do not share with people right now. But I create videos. Like right now, I just did on Git, GitHub version controlling, AWS, Google Cloud, and all of these stuff. And people really help me uh, help them out that they just know about AWS version controlling, Git, GitHub, yeah. and I would love to see you there too. So oh, yeah, for sure. very soon when I have, when I have uh, you know a lot of people just having ah. subscription. No, no. <laughs> so right my, my have, own, uh, no, no. My my yeah. only principle ideal is that you know even if there is one person in the crowd uh, who is benefited, I would still be there for that one person. So it doesn't and, matter uh, about whether yeah. you have a crowd of people and so on. It, if there is just one person who is willing to learn and understand whatever I have in my head, that one person is more than enough. You know, uh, before we wrap it up, Adil, could you possibly share your LinkedIn profile uh, in the chat box and any, uh, any anything of your work over here so that the people can uh, go ahead and refer to it? And I would ensure that, you know, uh, it's noted down and in the description. Yeah. I have a link tree uh, where I just have all my social medias uh, like you know, Facebook, uh, GitHub, GitLab, and I usually love to connect with people, listen to them and what they want to say help them but usually did not about the assignments but still yeah. trying to help them what they want to achieve trying my best to help them out uh otherwise i just refer to some good more good people so they uh, you can always reach me out if you have any question regarding git github because i have expertise on them uh, <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you can also, if you if you want to be in cloud, I can help you out. But for expert level, they can reach you out, of course. <laughs> because I'm yeah, still, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I have one year of experience in DevOps right now. And I, I'm actually a kind of new guy. Uh, but still, uh, I'm trying my best uh, to more and more people in DevOps, providing them resources, roadmap encourage passionate like how why you want to become a devops like uh, in from my community from my local campus now a lot of people know about what is devops why is so important now they are, are asking about they want to be become a devops engineer i, I receive a lot of queries so uh, this really help out people your contribution really help out uh, people and people really uh, those people who don't have idea like what kind of field they want to choose i really help them out that uh what what are you passion for devops can help you this in devops you you want to do this a lot of people who don't love code uh, 
and love and let them know that you only need to do scripts don't need to be worry i will help them out github a lot of stuff are out there so you just need to have a passion for it hard working uh, contribution yeah. uh, all out so that's all from my side so absolutely yeah absolutely awesome i, I would just uh, end by saying that we need more people like you and we would love to no, uh, see I you need, <laughs> We need people <laughs> like you. Ah, no, you no, saw no, the spider man. No, no. Not you. <laughs> you, you. <laughs> yeah, I, I think ah, we would. Know. We would. I think we would just keep giving compliments to each other if, if it went on. But then, no, yeah, thank, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I mean, like you, you've done so much for um, me as well as for the uh, community. And thanks a lot for sharing uh, all of your knowledge today. And uh, this is where we sign off. Uh, thanks a lot, guys, for watching this live. and we would have all of these videos uh, even though it's one and a half hours of length we would have it as smaller videos on our channel so that you guys can concentrate on a specific aspect and so on so it's a really long discussion i would love and uh, i thank again uh, adil for taking his time out today to discuss with us thanks a lot adil and thanks a lot everyone take care and see you all bye bye